Hello once again everyone, and welcome to Kruznik Sanctuary. I'm your host Kruznik X, and once again we're playing Final Fantasy XIV Endwalker. We are currently working on the Roll Quest finale. Last episode, it was discovered that a blasphemy was taking up residence, well, north of us in the Tower of Babel. Um, I don't know what fully going on, but let's get right down to it. This quest we're going to be doing as a magical DPS and one of my favorite, Summoner. Uh, so, let's get right down to it with the next quest in the storyline, the level 90 quest, Frozen Hope. Time being of the essence, I believe it prudent we split into two groups and cover as much ground as we may, as quickly as possible. If you and Master Fulchinol would inquire after the people at, Vi at Victor's spoils, the two of us shall see that we. The two of us shall see what we may learn at Liminal Station Four. When you have finished, pray meet us there. <clears throat> Victor's spoils is to the east of here. Yes. Let us be off. Right. Uh, no. Let's fly. I have been loving my, uh, Nimbus Cloud lately. Where is Victor's Spoils again? Is that the... Oh yeah, the mine. Ew. Oh wait, no, that was tra that was Tapper's Den. We might have a better chance if we... Wait. No. Where was it again? I think it was here. Um. Oh no, it is here. Yep. All right, let's talk to Fortune Alt. That they should choose to reside here in the cold. I can but presume they will not be amenable to conversation. Even so, we must not be deterred. Come. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna want to talk to me, especially after what happened last time we were here. But, you know, let's try and see. Talk? What is there to talk about? We've no home, no future, nothing. This doom spells the end of us all. Okay. Come to hear our grievances, have you? <laughs> We've more than you have time to hear them, I'm sure. We've lost not one, but two homes. Our loved ones, our livelihood. There's nothing left. I served my time with the military, I. For what? To lose all my friends, my son. And there was naught to show for it but our claim to Locus Amoenus. Or so we thought. Calamity was visited upon us for reasons we know not. And when we thought to flee, it followed on our heels to Garlemald. Ruin and ash at every turn. Alright, where's the last refugee? Oh god, it's these guys. I can't imagine why you or anyone else would feign interest in our troubles, but if you insist, you'll find a great many of the people here were in the military at one time or another. Some retiring with honors, 
and others without. Sadly, I'm one of the latter. Bore one too many scars in battle. Even so, my, contrib my contributions were enough to warrant leave to move to Locus Amoenus. It was a land of warmth and bounty. The Corvosi Rebellion, admittedly, proved troublesome for a time, but it didn't take long for the Second Legion to quell their uprising. You could practically drown in the calm and quiet. And then one day the skies came alive with flame. We were overrun by all manner of foul beasts born of our brothers and sisters. The Second Legion barely had enough time to s assemble their forces before they were overrun and snuffed out. We barely escaped with our lives. But we were greeted only with more rack and ruin upon our arrival here. And we've not the strength to take our home back from the Corvosi a second time. There's nothing left for us anywhere. Fortunate. Did you learn aught of how they came to be in such dire straits? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> I see. I heard much of the same. The military forces of Locus Amoenus were defeated in the wake of the final days. Desperate to survive, they naturally fled to Garlemald, seeking sanctuary. It was their hope the might of the Empire would allow them to reclaim the home they were forced to abandon. But the capital was already in ruin when they arrived. Needless to say, the lands they have long believed to be the ancestral home of the Gallian people may remain forever lost to them. Those unfamiliar with history would believe they have always resided in the bitter cold climes of northern Ilsebard, but that was only after the Corvosi invaded 800 years prior. Within, with the advent of Magitek, I imagine it was all too easy for Emperor Solus to rally his people and take back what they believed to be rightfully theirs. Yet history would tell us true, that the land they call Locus Amoenus has been known by other names and served as home to myriad peoples. Indeed, one need only look back to the Alagans' reign in the Third Astral Era to give the lie to Gallian claims sub to give the lie to Gallian claims of sovereign sovereignty. Sovereignty, my bad. Yet even had they such ancestral ties to Locus Amoenus, antecedents cannot justify their animosity to foreign peoples. Animosity poorly veiled by delusions of justice, as has been the case for so many nations throughout history. Would that, would that man had the sense and strength of will to break free from such claims of hatred? Help! Someone help! They've, they've turned! Another monster? Quickly, Chris! We have, we have a moment to lose. Yay, we get to fight. I'm not happy about it, but... What a... One of my mates seemed unwell, so I thought to come over and look in on him. Next thing I know, he... He... No one appears to be injured. Did he not attack? He just walked off in the direction of the tower, in a daze as if it was calling to him. He could not have gone far. If you would go after him, I will remain here and see that all are accounted for. There he is.
Not much, but still. All right, let's head back. Wait, where's everyone else? The beast is slain then. Thank the heavens. For a blessing no others have turned, and a measure of calm has been restored, if only for the moment. Witnesses here witnesses were able to offer a clue as to the source of the transformation. They claim the afflicted was listening to his radio. Even now it continues to play the same cryptic message. Wait, what? That thing's still running? No more. Never again. Rush. Ashes. Though distorted by radio static, you can hear a voice saying, The Empire is no more. Never again shall it rise from the ashes. But how is this possible? There are no facilities left standing that could possibly deliver a broadcast. The last time this happened, the signal came from the Tower of Babel. Be that as it may, Anima is no more, and the Tower of Babel has fallen into disrepair. By your hand, no less. Which begs the question, who, or perhaps what? Could be behind this. Chris, Master Fortunot, a moment if you would. Shortly after we finished our inquiry at Liminal Station 4, Lord Emmerich and Admiral Mervib arrived and requested an audience. Apologies for our late arrival. Knowing firsthand the devastation of which blasphemies are capable, I discussed the matter with the Admiral, and we were of one mind that the situation warranted our immediate presence. Is it safe to pres Is it safe to presume a representative of the survey team has already arrived? Indeed I have. Thank you for coming all this way on such short notice. Recent events here at camp, at the camp, have proved most enlightening. Fill them in, Fortunal. <clears throat> and this is the aforementioned radio. Never again. Rush. A harsh reminder of their misfortune. Sufficient to push some wayward few over the edge, it would seem. Yet there still remains the question of who is sending this message, and from where. Glory, glory, civilizations, Garamount. For glory everlasting, for Gollumon. No. It couldn't be. You recognize this message? A mantra often spoken by Lord Nerva. Anyone who lived in the provinces under his authority could scarcely forget these words. He sought to claim the throne after the assumption after the assassination of Emperor Varus, did he not? After civil war broke out, he all but disappeared according to the intelligence we managed to gather. How could he have managed to breach the tower undetected? To have done so and remain unnoticed by the creatures infesting the tower seems a nigh impossible task. Unless... Do you think the voice on the radio is Nerva? In a manner of speaking, yes. Not as the man he once was, but as a blasphemy. Robbed of the throne and forced to watch the empire he longed to command crumble before his very eyes. 
If such loss did not drive him to the same fate as Quintus, the despair he felt no doubt overcame and turned him. Nerva's delusions of grandeur aside, the Garlean's plight sounds not unlike the Sahagan, desperate to preserve their spawning grounds. Indeed. Though unscrupulous by any measure, the Garleans found solidarity in their ideology, as did the people of Ishgard in the church. Adrift without home or purpose, it is all too easy for despair to take cold. Would that a remedy were as simple as offering them land as we did the Sahagan. In all likelihood, the Garleans would refuse to settle for aught less than what they believed to be their ancestral homeland of Locus Amoenus. A claim the Quavosi would readily take arms to denounce. We would do well not to further the fan the flames of animosity twixt them. Then perhaps, at the very least, we can offer them peace of mind, and a means to regain some semblance of stability in their lives. To offer them true comfort and stability, Garlemald must be rebuilt. By no means an easy solution, but perhaps the only one worthy of pursuit. Of course, this new Garlemald must remain a sovereign nation, free from the oversight of others. Aye, they would see no meaning in it otherwise. If I am not mistaken, Alphino and Alice have already made strides in helping the people here regain some normalcy in their day-to-day -day living. A most important first step, but it will mean little without proper leadership. Rather than a single individual, perhaps a governing body of sorts would prove more effective. There are a number of former Senate members among the refugees at Camp Broken Glass, as I recall. With their help, Creating the framework for a new governance is not an impossibility. Then let us call the people together and see what they make of our proposal. This is it. Where's the... Uh, where's what's his name? The final days has taken has taken much from you all. I can but imagine the pain you feel in the face of such immeasurable loss. And though the final days have been averted, its effects yet linger, and a blasphemy has been born of your suffering. Decisive action must be taken before further harm is wrought upon you. To overcome such adversity is too great a risk for any one person. But as a people united, there may yet be hope for the morrow. While it is not our place to decide how you will move forward, we would offer a small measure of guidance. We were told a number of former members of your Senate yet remain among you. Would you be amenable to an interim government led by these individuals until such time as Garlemald can be rebuilt? Rebuild Garlemald? Is such a thing truly possible? <laughs> Even if we do cobble together some governing council... They won't be making anything of that pile of ash we dare call Gollumald. There's no going back to Locus Amoenus either. Rack and ruin. Those are our only options. I realize to rebuild Gollumald is a seemingly impossible task. But you needn't undertake it alone. My children are working with members of the First Legion as we speak to begin an organized relief effort. And there are others from the provinces, and there are others from the provinces no doubt willing to lend their expertise. You need but ask, not as would-be conquerors, but as brothers and sisters of this star, and others will heed your call. 
If you should still see no merit in the rebuilding of Gollumald, then I would instead offer you residency in Shalian. I promise you will be welcomed with open arms. Shalian. So now you'd go and... It so now you'd expect us to go and lick boots in some country we've never even heard of? My apologies if I appeared overly forward in my proposition. Considering our strict policies on non-intervention until but recently, it is not surprising that you are unfamiliar with my homeland. It is an island nation to the north, home to myriad peoples, which is why I believe it would not prove difficult to accommodate you and your peers. To be clear, you would not be migrating to Charlian to live in servitude. You have my word that each and every one of you would be guaranteed citizenship upon entry. And why exactly would you go to such lengths for us? For the conquerors you barely know. Charlian was long aware of the coming doom that would be the final days. And so we were preparing to evacuate this star, taking as many people and resources as our stories, our stores would allow. Initially, it was our intent to save the people of Garlemald as well. But we had not forgotten your transgressions invading our Lamigo, your rejection of our entreaties for peace. After a great deal of deliberation, it was decided that we would forego an invitation to Garlemald. A determination made with great trepidation. We had convinced ourselves it was ultimately for the greater good. Though I can think of at least one individual who would continue to protest. To ignore the plight of those one might conceivably save is not wisdom. It is indolence. Sage counsel I brazenly cast aside when confronted with the final days in earnest. But Chris here and his companions refused to forsake those we were otherwise unwilling to save. With great risk to themselves, they achieved the impossible and opened my eyes to the error of the forum's decision. If all other roads lead to ruin regardless, perhaps we should at least consider it. Then it would be my pleasure to invite you all to Camp Broken Glass, where you should have warm food and beds both. Weren't these the guys who were originally here? Uh, they might prove a problem. Admiral Mervib and I will speak with Maxima and the others, and consider how best to assist the Guardians moving forward. Should we broach the subject of the blasphemy, however, we will not hesitate to call upon you. Sounds good to me. Hurry, right, Fortunal. You saw what I. Hurry, right, Fortunal. You saw what I saw. Wait, what? Who is. Is. Nero! Don't you walk away from me, boy! Um. I'll take the Great Sink. Six tincture of strength. All right, next episode we will be doing as the next quest we're doing is the level 90 quest, Misguided Few. We will be doing that as a physical ranged DPS. But until then, that's it for this episode. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Thank you for watching. If you're watching on Twitch, stay tuned. But if you haven't done it all, done it yet, be sure to follow me for no. 
me and turn on and hit the bell icon for notifications for all of my live streams and videos. Be sure if you're feeling generous, throw some bits our way or subscribe for access to exclusive videos and live streams. If you're watching on YouTube and you like this video, click the like button below and leave a comment. Subscribe to the channel by clicking here and click the bell icon for notifications. Click here to watch more, click here to watch the previous episode, and click here to watch the next one. See you next time!